Hello, wonderful people. Welcome to today's edition of Being the Help I Needed. My name is Theophilus Lamte, your regular host, and this is the Theophilus Lamte Ministries on YouTube and Facebook. You want to invite a friend right about now. This is adult education and Bible studies. This is what we did when, I mean, back in the days, Sunday, Sunday school, when um, you, you, you gather the young children, and I used to run away a lot, and I've said this in my testimony. It's, it's on my YouTube. You want to check it out. I used to run away and go and hide under the bed and put the shoes and everything. These are the things that we were thought back in the days, but we are doing an, an, an extended version, an advanced version, an um, adult version where we allow the Spirit of God to open it up for us so we will take lessons here and there to make our lives better. We've been dealing with Joseph for the past few weeks. Today we are going to continue. Last week we ended um, with where Potiphar's wife had to fabricate a lie against Joseph because he failed to lie with her. And he stood for God and avoided the great wickedness that this act could have um, brought him. But then Potiphar's wife managed to convince the husband. And the husband got furious and threw Joseph into the prison. Today we are going to continue from when he gets into prison and what happened in prison and all the lessons that we can um, pick from there as well. I'm sure you are ready. Before we start, shall we say a word of prayer? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we are grateful for this beautiful time that you've had for us today, that your children will be gathered here to study your word. We pray your word will go forth with power and authority and by all means receive all the glory in heaven as you pour your blessings upon your children here on earth. We love you, Lord. We bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Beloved, thank you and welcome once again to the Theophilus Lamptey Ministries. This program is dubbed Being the Help I Needed. You don't want to watch or listen to it alone. You just invite a friend and family. You want to sit down as a family. You want to have a discussion with your friends and do a little bit of studies as far as these teachings are concerned. It's been a great blessing to me and thank you to all my lovely um, viewers, the comments, the messages, the WhatsApp messages you send me about how he's blessing you. I say, may God keep on blessing you. It gives us so much encouragement. It gives us um, so much push and energy to do what we are doing, no matter how sometimes stressful and inconvenient it becomes. And it's because you keep watching and you keep encouraging us and you keep supporting us in diverse ways, prayers, gifts, whatever it is that you are doing. God bless you. We are going to quickly go into it today. So we are moving from the verse. Um, this is chapter 39 still, but we are continuing from the verse 21 when Potiphar had now pushed Joseph into prison. 21, he said, but the Lord was with Joseph and he showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. Before I comment on this one, you see, initially, what we saw was that the Lord was with Joseph. Also, in the verse, um, the verse what? Uh, I think the verse 1. Yes, the verse 1 of the 39. We saw all of that, that they, they sold a young man and he came to Egypt. But the verse 2 was where the Lord was with him. And we said that the Lord was with him and he was a prosperous man. And we see that in the verse 21 as well of the chapter 39, that the Lord is still with him. So this is what I wanted you to pay attention to. This is Potiphar, a very great military man in Egypt under Pharaoh. And Joseph happened to work under this uh, man as a slave. And you come home one day, this is somebody you've I mean, you admire a lot. He's a young man. You've seen the hand of the Lord upon him. You see that everything he holds begins to prosper. Whatever assignments you give him flourishes. You, you, I mean, you admire him quite okay. And you come home one day and your wife is saying that he attempted to rape her. What would be your reaction? But have you really thought about it? That in all the things that Potiphar could have done to Joseph, he rather threw him in prison. I just want to give you a little um, thought this morning, afternoon, evening. I don't know where you are, but whatever time it is in your zone, think about it. Such man of authority, such man of power. If a young man like that attempts to rape your wife, what comes into your mind as a form of punishment? This man will be killed immediately. But rather you send him to prison. And this is what I'm telling you about the hand of God. 
the hand of God in the lives of people that trust him absolutely. There is something that we see about people that trust God absolutely. The supernatural becomes their realm. So when whatever is happening to you does not make sense, it means that you are living in the realm of the supernatural. It is a spiritual act. Because the natural thing to do, this is a slave. You could easily kill him and throw him away. But you see, God has made this slave very valuable to him before all these things happened. So the only thing that came into his mind is to throw him into prison. It was part of God's preservation scheme for Joseph. Because Joseph had to be hidden away from the people so that God would build that character in him. So God was still in the process of testing the character of Joseph to be sure that he wouldn't mess up when he opens the heavens on his head. Because God was taking him some, somewhere. But the, the, the gravity of what God was going to do in the life of Joseph is so strong that God must be sure that his morality is upright. And we've seen that he has been able to pass the test of morality because no matter the temptation that was brought before him from Potiphar's wife, the young man did not bow. No matter the pressure that was mounted on him, no matter the calamity that befell him, he did not still give up and give an excuse to, to commit sin. We are giving so much excuse to commit sin nowadays. And we are still believers. Lord, you know I have to pay my bills. And Lord, you know that if I don't do this, this will happen to me. We hear this a lot of the times. And, and I'm in the fix and I don't know what to do. And he decided to help me. So I, I, that's why I ended up sleeping with him. That is not an excuse, my brother. All these people in the Bible are witnesses for us. They are representatives of God to us. When we see their life, they become a template. So if Joseph did not fall, and right after that he was thrown into prison, why is it that nobody has threatened to put you in prison and yet still we fall for that sin? It's because the sin is already in you. He was only looking for a right atmosphere for it to manifest. So don't blame whoever brought the temptation to you because he has just become a tool for the devil to use. So no matter what they say or what they do, when you yield in eventually, it's because of your lustful desires that came outside of you. It's not because of the person. So please, let's watch our desires carefully because when desires conceive, they conceive and they become sin. When the sin has gotten its full term, it is fully grown, it, it, it brings death. So it looks as if I'm just following my last four desires. And all these covetousness that is happening to our generation nowadays is the major factor the devil is using. Young people, we've not worked before. I want to own properties, want to own houses and cars and all of those things in plus places. But you've not even worked for a month to see what we call salary. After your taxes deducted and everything, your take home, you don't even know how that system works. And you want to own houses and be flying um first class and be going for very bougie holidays and all of those things when you work hard for it it is good but if you are not working for it and you want to live that life it will conceive sin and over time that sin will lead to your death that is why young girl that is listening to me now and i'm talking to you you have all that it takes yet still you can feel that your soul is not within you you are not happy nothing is moving on with you you have all the things that a young lady or probably somebody twice your age is supposed to be comfortable with and okay. But you look at all the things you have and you are still frustrated. You are oppressed and you are depressed because you got it through great wickedness and you sinned against God. It's about time. God is calling you. God is calling you to come back. Forfeit this life. Surrender it all unto God. And you see that things will begin to get better. He will restore and revive you. If you can only open your heart to him today, God is knocking at your door today. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I strongly believe that I'm speaking to a young lady who is listening to me now. God is calling you. All the excuses and all the, um, the, the kind of um, reasons you've given to live this kind of life, you see that you are, you are dying. And today is the day of your salvation. This message is for you. If not for anybody at all, it's for you. Just this one lady that is listening to me today. You want to come out of this, this sinful web that you've gotten yourself into. Don't blame that man. It's not his fault. It was your lustful desires you were chasing. And the devil used him as a tool to fuel it for you. I rebuke that hand of the enemy over your life in the name of Jesus. May God have mercy on you.
and let his grace be sufficient for you. Let's let's continue. So we see that still the Lord is with Joseph and now he showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. The Lord showed him mercy and he found favor because Joseph stood for the Lord previously. If Joseph did not stand for the Lord, the Lord would not have mercy and show him favor in the prison. If he sinned or, and, and then got himself into prison, he will be tormented there. That means that there are people in the prison that did not commit any offense. So if you are listening to me, probably you are listening to me in the cell or in the prison, wherever you find yourself, or you are going through some situation that has caused you to be, be, be in some barricade, not like a, a prison, but spiritually you are in some form of whatever it is, which is not as a result of a sinful life. I pray the favor of God over you in that location and the mercy of God locates you now. By the Spirit of God. So it's not everybody who is in a, in a prison or in a cell that committed any sin. Some people, lies were fabricated against them. And it's a test that they must go through. So in the prison, we must see what you must go through, what you must endure, so that you will not become a victim to the enemy. So you can become offended because I've served God all my life and God, I stood for you. I was even saying that this is great wickedness. I'm saying that this is sin that I don't want to commit against you. And yet still you allow me to get to prison? God, no. This is too much. And that is what a lot of us would have done. But Joseph did not do that. And because of that, God gave him favor there. And he also showed him a lot of mercy. Even at the one who kept the prison. Let's see 22. And the keeper, and the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison and whatsoever they did there he was the doer of it so joseph had picked up an anointing from um the time he got into the house of potiphar which is an anointing that made his his, his authorities or his bosses hand over everything to him and people in authority will not hand over everything to you unless they find something in you that makes them profitable so i said Potiphar handed over everything in his household to Joseph because he saw that whatever Joseph handled prospered. Whatever Joseph handled excelled. And that same spirit was with Joseph. So it is not where you find yourself. It is still what I said before, who is with you? And the Lord was with Joseph, even in the prison. May the Lord be with you in that trial. May the Lord be with you in that challenge. May the Lord be with you in that poverty that you are battling now. May the Lord be with you in that sickness. And because the Lord is with you, you will not fear. You will come out and become greater than what you are now in the name of Jesus. 23. And the keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand. This is the same thing that Potiphar also did. He never cared about anything that he had given to Joseph. Joseph would do it and that was it. Once he hands over to Joseph, that is it. Joseph's character was solid, believers. May we emulate this young man. May we desire to live the life he lived. Even in pain and anguish, he was still very resolute. And he stayed with God in everything. Though the keeper was not in a hurry or he wasn't even bothered to um, look at anything that was under the hand of Joseph. Because the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. I pray for you this afternoon that the Lord will be with you. I pray that the Lord will be with me so that whatever I do, the Lord will make it to prosper. Believers, it is not where you are. It is not what you are going through. It is not the things that are happening to you. It is who is with you may the lord be with you and when the lord is with you everything you do will prosper in the name of jesus we are coming to the chapter 40 now and we are still going to look at what happened in the prison there was a scenario that joseph also um i mean there was something that he did and that's quite interesting we will look at the beginning stages and God willing, we will continue next week. So you see, people are complaining, and we all do, and we've all done it before. Probably we don't do it now, but we used to do it, where we complain about everything, and there are no opportunities in life, and if I get an opportunity, opportunities abound. It's just that we are not ready. It's better to be ready for an opportunity that will never show up 
cannot to be ready and the opportunity pass you by. Probably the opportunity might be one in a lifetime. So what we call breakthrough is when opportunity meets readiness at the Kairos moment and everything begins to flow seamlessly. Let me say it again. Breakthrough is when opportunity meets readiness at the Kairos moment and everything begins to work seamlessly. That is how people become great. So all the time that you are there, you are working your character into readiness so that when the opportunity comes, you will hit it at the right time, at the right place, and you will wow whoever you need to wow for your destiny to take effect. That is how it's supposed to be. While we are a lot of complainers and talkers, a few of us are doers. It is those that will do the word that is accounted to them as righteousness. It's not those that just come to church and listen. It's the implementation of the word that makes all the difference. Today, may something break. May that, that lukewarm spirit break in my life. May it break in your life. May that procrastinative spirit, may it be destroyed permanently today in the name of Jesus. May we take the opportunities that God brings our way. The first verse of Genesis chapter 40 said, And it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was wroth against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them in the ward in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. Why will the king of Egypt have issues with two of his people, the chief of the battlers and the chief of the bakers, and decide that he wants to put them in the prison of the guard, the captain of the guard? It sounded as if that was Potiphar's personal prison because it, it was the captain of the guard. He had the prison. That's where he put Joseph. But because God was involved in everything that was happening in Joseph's life, when the king had issues with two of his people, these people ended up being where Joseph was. Beloved, God is involved in whatever is happening to you. If you can stay with God and you can stay faithful and truthful to whatever God is doing in your life, you will see the hand of God eventually. God is involved. The why, the how, and the when. Bible said the secret things remains with the Lord. Leave it for God and just play your part. And let's see how things unfold. Verse 3 of chapter 40. And he put them in ward in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them. You see, Joseph had found favor with the captains of the guard, the one who kept um, the, all, all the prisoners. He had handed over everything to him. So when these two people were also brought into the prison, the man just hands them over to Joseph to take care of them. And he saved them and they continued a season in ward. And they dreamed a dream, both of them, each man his dream in one night. Each man, according to the interpretation of his dream, the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt, which were bound in the prison. Now, these two people had a dream. In, in each of them had a separate dream. And you see, Joseph had been given the gift of interpreting dreams. All this while, this thing has not manifested. But when he was sent to prison by the falsification of Potiphar's wife, he did not break down. He did not get to a place of depression and um, frustration. He still lived his life as a normal human being, full of the spirit. And the Lord was with him in the prison. So this is the time now God is going to fine tune his, his dream interpretation skill, which was supposed to be his asset for tomorrow. So until God gives you the opportunity to test the giftings he has put in you in a place where it's not public, you will not enjoy public praise one day. David had a similar scenario. And when we were dealing with the story of David the other time, we realized that David had to battle the lion and the bear in the wilderness where there was no exposure. It was between him God and the animals. But that was what built David up for the time he had to face Goliath. So I said that Goliath is that 
place or that moment when everybody is watching and God is ready to announce you to your world. But prior to the time of Goliath, you should have had the bear and the lion encounter. So if Joseph was in a hurry to let people see what he carried as a spiritual gift, which most of us fall victim to today. When we see the vibrations of the spirit in our, in our, in ourselves, we want, we want to have a stadium um, opportunity to demonstrate the power of God. And no, it doesn't work like that. God will deal with you in, in the closet. God will deal with you in, in, in the wilderness and, and train you with, with, the, with the usefulness and, and the, um, how expressive your giftings can be. If you can trust God when there is no audience there and you can be faithful and not look for material rewards in those times, then you are ready for Goliath. Because when he killed the bear, nobody rewarded him. Nobody applauded him. When he killed the lion, nobody applauded him. Nobody gave him any reward. He didn't get anything. The only thing was that he got opportunity to come and tell people one day that, oh, when I was in the wilderness, the, the, the lion came and the Lord delivered him into my they delivered the bear into my hands. The bear, the, the bear came and similar thing happened. That was all he had as a reward. But the day that he faced Goliath, Al Jazeera was there, TV3 was there, Adum FM, even UTV was there. I was there myself to capture it. Oh, you don't know, David is my friend. That's that's just by the way. But what I'm trying to say in essence is that at that time of your manifestation, the stage is set, but you've had your training moments. And that is where you begin to shine. So this butler and the baker were the wilderness experience for Joseph. So God was seeing how he was going to handle it. If he messes up with it, he will never be what God has ordained him to be. And that's what I said earlier. That breakthrough is when the opportunity comes to meet readiness. And then everything begins to be seamless at the right time. So what was happening to Joseph now was that he was getting ready for that great opportunity at that Kairos moment. Beloved, what are you doing now that things seem tough? What are you doing now that things, things seem like they are, not going, they are not working for you? That is your wilderness experience. Don't be eager for people to see what God is doing in your life. Build all the tenacity, the capacity, and all the abilities you can get. Because your time of manifestation is coming. And it will be one platform. If you miss it, it's for life. If you also execute it properly, you are set for destiny. And nobody can truncate it. That is what we are looking at. So let's see what happens. Um, I mean, we will not take too much of your time today. We'll just quickly uh, deal with this one. Before we go into the dream itself properly next week, I'm just trying to let you see what happened prior to the interpretation of the dream of the chief butler and the chief baker. And then um, we, we will continue from there and eventually see how um, Joseph becomes the prime minister and what he did as a resultant effect of that position. And they dreamed the dream, both um, in one night. Okay, I've said that already. So that's the five. So let's go to six now. Six. And Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them. And behold, they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in the ward of his Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? You see, so the guy is concerned. The guy has been dealt with painfully by being thrown into the prison. But whilst he was in prison, that empathy was still with him. That humble spirit that he's concerned about other people, compassionate spirit, was still with Joseph. He saw that these two guys were sad and he wanted to find out what is it that is causing you this sadness. And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. So you see, God had kept quiet or God had been silent all this while that Joseph had been thrown into the prison. For an offense he never had a hand in. And the guy is still faithfully staying with God. Look at what he told them. Do not interpretations belong to God. He still acknowledges God as sovereign, as supreme. Even in that predicament. He was in a bad situation, but he had enough power, energy to give comfort to the other people. He went to them and said, what is causing you this sadness? Beloved, most of us cannot hold ourselves up when we are in challenges. 
So we can't even extend any helping hand to our neighbor. And we hear this very often. The Latin version means that I'm not being able to handle my own personal issues. How then would I go and look out for somebody? But believers, listen to me today and listen good. You don't have to have everything figured out for yourself to be there for your neighbor. Because what you are trying to figure out, the solution might be in your neighbor who seems to be going through a challenge now in his hand. What I'm saying is that if you want to handle everything you are going through to be okay before you can help your brother, chances are that you will never be able to help anybody. Because nobody is able to handle everything they are going through to solve it absolutely. Because God will definitely keep a turn in your flesh to keep you human. If you can handle all your cases, you don't need God. For you to need God, there will be something you cannot deal with. So you keep on going to God every now and then. And because we were created to depend on one another, something belonging to you is locked up in your neighbor who seems to be suffering now that you can also go and help whilst you forfeit what you are going through. Because for all you know, what you are going through, he holds the key to it. So the earlier we want to be help to other people, the faster our own problems will be taken care of. When you do it for others, God will do it for you. That is the secret code. Everything that will make it about you is what the devil has made us to become. So a believer nowadays who is going through a little bit of challenge here and there will not even have that energy to call another brother or sister and check on them and say, I I'm praying for you and God asked me to do this for you and that for you. Even when God whispers about their issues into our minds, we brush it aside and tell God, God, please hold on. These are my issues. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, up to Z. When you finish with me, I will look at that. I'll, I'll look at what is happening to them. But that is not how it's supposed to be. When you can attend to people in your challenge, God finds you useful and worthy to be here. And he will deliver you from whatever is pursuing you. Today, may that challenge you, may that statement provoke some goodness and kindness in you. And let your compassionate spirit come alive to the glory of the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Beloved, as we wrap up today's um, episode, I just want you to spend this time, call a friend, send the link to another brother, sister, wherever they are. Somebody is going through a challenge that needs to hear this one. You need to be that vessel that God will use to connect these people to their breakthroughs. The story of Joseph is such a beautiful one. Look at how the butler and the baker came into the scene and God was manipulating his way through. And I said that that scenario of the baker and the butler is what God used to test the character of Joseph and how he was going to use the giftings God has deposited in him. Without the butler and the baker, he would not have been able to make his giftings expressive. And you will see that the baker and the butler were also connections that he needed for his tomorrow. That is how God works. So if you do whatever you're supposed to do, as God has ordained us to do, and you leave everything in the hands of God, everything plays out properly. And there is one thing we need to know. Every time God is giving us an opportunity to exalt his name. In your workplace, God will let something happen to your boss and you must come in with the name of God. You must come in with the name of Jesus. Something will happen to your colleague and you need to pray and miraculous things will begin to happen and you want to chip in that name, Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. Look at what happened. When Joseph immediately saw that these people, their countenance has changed and it was that of a sad one. He didn't hesitate at all. He didn't waste time just to come and, uh, and let them know that there is a God that he serves. So quickly, he associates himself with this God. He associates himself with God so strong that he said, don't you know that interpretations belong to God? Now tell me, I'm connected to God. So because the interpretations belong to God, if you tell me, I can contact him and find out what your situation is. So the moment he saw that their countenance was of a sad one, he saw that it was an open door for evangelism. Beloved, let's make sure that we capitalize on every opportunity. Why is it that your friend will come to work and come and tell you that, you know what, bro, I'm going through a whole lot. That is an opportunity right there for you to preach the gospel. Charlie, my husband is giving me a headache, opportunity for the gospel. And I'm, 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 I'm having a tough time at, at work and my boss is doing this and that, opportunity to preach the gospel. 
Everything is in Jesus. And Jesus is in everything. If you can give the person Jesus Christ as the seed, over time, when the seed begins to germinate, it will bear fruit and everything they need to know will begin to find expression from within. So whatever you see, whatever you hear, it's an opportunity for you to express God. Don't let your current situation suppress you from seeing the opportunities God is bringing around you to preach the gospel. Every opportunity is for the sake of the gospel. You were saved. I was saved. So we would go out there and preach the good news to the masses. Say, so go to the ends of the world. Go into all nations and preach the good news. Make disciples for yourself. Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And teach them of the commandments that I have taught you. That is the great commission. We've all been asked to do this one. It's not for the pastor. It's not for the prophet, apostle, evangelist, or the teacher. It is for the believer. The moment you accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, this becomes your mandate. From January to now, who have you preached the good news to? Can you mention people that you've deliberately preached the good news of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to? Can you deliberately, confidently, boldly number people that have become your disciples, that feed the word of God through you, that when they have issues, they will call you for clarity as far as the word of God is concerned, that when they have things bothering their mind, they will call you and say, brother, I don't understand what is happening. Can you help me out? Sister, this is what is happening to me. Is it a way I can, I, can, I can meet you, I can call you so you teach me how to go about it? Is it possible you can pray with me? How many people have become disciples of yours? How many people have seen God through you? How expressive as the Jesus Christ you have in you been visible to the world and the people that work around you? This is the reason for which we were saved. It's not for us to run away to heaven. It's for us to make sure that we become laborers in the vineyard of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He said, the harvest is many, but the laborers are few. Today, I pray that you will come a liberal in the vineyard of Jesus. A lot of souls are perishing. A lot of people are connected to us and yet still we are not making that effort to speak to them about Jesus Christ. May that not be your portion, believer. May something dramatic happen to you today after listening to this Joseph story. So Joseph took that opportunity and he spoke to the baker and the butler and they told him that they've dreamt a dream but they don't have interpretation. And immediately his gifting started coming alive. But he didn't jump ahead of himself and he said, tell me, I, I know what to do. No, no, no. He made sure that they understood or figured out the source of whatever God was about to do in his life. He said, do you not know that interpretations belong to God? Tell me what it is. Tell me them, I pray you. And that was how Joseph was able to hear their dream, give them their interpretations, and all the other things followed. That is where we are going to go to next week and see what happened from there. But what I want us to look at it today is, I mean, the few lessons that I want to highlight is that Joseph took advantage of the opportunity to preach Christ to the butler and the baker. Joseph was not bitter irrespective of the situation that he found himself after Potiphar's wife had lied against him to Potiphar and he had been thrown into prison. Joseph perpetually had the hand of the Lord upon him and it was evident wherever he went that authorities handed over everything to him and they did not bother to come and check. He was diligent and excellent at whatever he was doing. And because the hand of the Lord was upon him, everything he touched was blessed. And that is what we call a prosperous man. Not because he had everything at his disposal, but because whatever came into his domain came out excellent. That is what we call a prosperous man. So today, don't chase the materials anymore. Chase Jesus Christ. When he ministers to you, when he comes to dwell with you, you become prosperous in every area of your life. If you give advice, excellent advice. If you are a marketer, you become excellent at it. If you are a director, you give excellent direction. If you are a leader, you lead your people excellently. Excellence becomes your hallmark. Seek me first 
and I'll add all other things to it. The character of Joseph is an amazing one. He did not abuse the favor of God upon his life, never. Just like Daniel and the three Hebrew boys. They were favored, but they did not abuse it. A lot of us have been favored by people that God has brought to us who are very influential, but the favor, we abuse it. We begin to demand materialistic things which are unnecessary. And sooner than later, these people will not mind us again. And we begin to pray all sort of unnecessary prayers. No. When God causes a man to favor you, you are not supposed to take advantage of that favor. Because that favor can slip. Do what you are doing to give them that profit that makes them want to favor you. And just stay there. And every other thing will begin to fall in place according to God's own divine plan. So we've seen Joseph now being in the prison. How he conducted himself in the prison. Eventually going out there to look out for the butler and the baker when they were in a situation that he could see that they were not okay. And they began to share their dream with him. And we see how God turned that situation around. This is as far as we come today. God willing, next week we'll continue with the interpretation of the dream and then the aftermath of that. We've been dealing with Joseph. My name, as usual, is Theophilus Lamte. I'm your regular host. This is the Theophilus Lamte Ministries on YouTube and Facebook. Um, you would want to subscribe. You want to click on the notification button. You want to send it to a friend. Contact anyone that you know that this is what we call the adult education in Bible studies. The things we were not able to learn during Sunday school and appreciate properly. God is giving us inspiration to understand it properly. This is a family program. It's not just for mom and dad. It's for all the family. All of us can sit down and learn as we watch and begin to deliberate. And God will bless all of us. So make sure that you send your comments, your feedback, suggest it to a friend. If you have personal questions, you can WhatsApp me on my WhatsApp number or send me an email. And then I'm sure that God will help us to continually be a blessing to you. Till we meet again next week, if Jesus tarries, stay blessed and keep going. Don't give up. Everything will fall in place. Let your trust and your belief in Jesus Christ be absolute. Thank you and have a good one. Bye-bye.